Good morning, everybody. Good morning.
table June and July and August, and they're free, and you can, they're useful to hand out to friends, because you need to keep evangelizing. All churches need to keep evangelizing. That's another thing they're starting to back off on. And you have to keep doing it. You have to keep trying to bring Christ to other people. And we'll, we'll be looking at that today uh, in Hebrews and First Corinthians. So we've got new daily breads. We got our annual meeting. We got June 6th. We got Celebrate Recovery on June 7th, Thursday. Um, Cindy and I will be bringing down the truck and the Honda. So the Honda will stay here. So we have two vehicles to use for picking people up. And uh, and then we're gonna uh, we've ordered two picnic tables and we're gonna put those in the in the truck and uh, take care of those. Um, but for the Bible study. The topic is faith healing. Um, I had a chance on Friday, I counseled, uh, counseled some folks, among whom are pastors, and uh, they gave us a nice, a nice check for that, but I didn't do it for that reason. But I got to meet uh, and talk with the head pastor of Fayette, who was usually so busy. And we don't get a chance to hook up very often, so it was a, it was a great time to talk and tell them what's going on, and, and I know what's going on at their church. And so, what I'd like to do is, if Robin and John Bazinet would each prepare a brief presentation for Thursday on the faith healing, whatever, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you as to what you should or shouldn't share, yes, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, I have. My sister made an appointment in Augusta, and um, she's, it's got to do with the closer vehicles and something else going okay. on. So I, I cannot okay. do that. I'm All sorry. right. I would love to do that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. I, I thought you said you committed. Okay. Yeah, right. I thought yeah. you said you committed. All right. Yeah. Well, John, prepare something, and if anybody else, if the Lord's <laughs> touching your heart at the moment to speak, speak about that, just let me know. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, that's all right. That's all right. It's only five points this time. <laughs> Fishers and men, we're looking at a June 23rd or 30th, or, or both. Uh, if, if they're both Saturdays, and uh, if you're interested in one of those two dates, uh, let me know. Uh, Patty Doll's here next week, so it kind of makes it's been pretty busy for us. So there's a sign up for the cookout on the back. Ooh. Okay. So anything you can do to help the cookout, just more than likely do that. Other than the more likely the twenty when I go fishing, the Lord provides me with fish. <laughs> that has been a blessing He's given me all my life, and I appreciate it very much. So if you're there, the fish will hit you one way or another. <laughs> June 10th, Daddy Doll, cook out, and, uh, and that, that used to be a good time. Please invite friends. Um, we'll, uh, we'll give them some money, and we'll... Uh, and we'll, we'll take a little, well, we'll accept collections too, but it's just, it's free. And uh, Patty and Dee are just great people. And they, she always has a prophetic word of some kind, so it's, it's always worth listening. And uh, June 17th, Sunday's Father's Day, and Bob's doing breakfast. Ooh. Bob, would you just stand up for a moment and, uh, and turn around and speak with you? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. You got to, I mean, get the, get the camera ready. Yeah. Turn around and do it. Bob, are you standing ready? Woo! Thank you. 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 <laughs> well, Mildred has not complained, so we're good. Yeah. All right, so Bob is in his suit and tie, and he'll be doing breakfast on Father's Day, and he's got a little presentation on Father's Day. That's fine. Again, verbal Holy Spirit leads. Should be on four hours. Okay. Food bank, but if any of you can help a little with the food bank, it's always useful. Uh, and there's Bible study service scripture on the back. 
All right, with that, uh, and we have a call to worship job. Lord willing. All right, try to get in front of the camera at least once today. <laughs> we have this mysterious, you know, the shofar sticking out. I've had people ask me, what is that horn? What is that instrument? You know? <laughs> I'm just camera shy. Oh, oh there you go again. <laughs> Hi, class. Being the cameraman and the show fighting at the same time. <laughs> anyway, arise, shine, for thy light is come, Amen. and the glory of Yahuwah, the living God, is risen upon thee. <laughs> to us today, and we give you the praise and the glory in Yeshua's dear name, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 All right. Good. Uh, all right. And uh, Jay Lynn uh, has been writing some prayers and poetry, and so we're going to have Jay Lynn come up, and she called me yesterday <laughs> and shared some with me, and so I'd like her to share them with you. Are you okay? Um, you come up here, or you can come up here, not hand to the microphone. No. Yeah, we all need to hear you. All right. Yeah, just speak loudly then. Amen. And then my poems about Jesus says, Blessed is he as he walks with me. He tells us of his love from high, high above. He is the reason for us to believe in. With him we walk and we talk. His angels are high, high up in the sky. Jesus believes in us from dawn till dusk. If you begin to sin, just remember he's within. Our Savior is always on good behavior. If to Him you pray, He will help you through your day. He stands at heaven's door waiting forevermore. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to, at this point to go to prayer. We'll start with the word of prayer in Psalm 23. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and then the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I want to share a short passage with you before we sing a couple songs. This is out of 2 Kings 6. And it's, a, it's just one of those stories that sticks in my mind a lot. And this is uh, with Elijah the prophet. There was Elijah and then Elijah. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such place. But immediately Elijah, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and time again, Elijah warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called his officers together and demanded, which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord the king, one of the officers replied. Elijah, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel, even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Well, there's a scary guy. Better than I said. And notice that the king of Israel is listening to God. This is a king that listens to God and believes and acts. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded. Go so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back, Elijah is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elijah. What's the Lord always tell us? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. He has this. For there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elijah prayed to the Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots and fire. The angelic army was there. As the Aramean army advanced toward him, Elijah prayed to the Lord, Please make them blind. So the Lord struck him with blindness, and Elijah had asked. Then Elijah went out and told them, You've come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I will take you to the man you're looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria, which in Israel at that time, Israel was the northern kingdom, and that was a capital city, loaded with troops. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elijah prayed, O Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elijah, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Well, we hear that cry a lot of times, don't we? But here's the thing. Here is a foreshadowing of what Jesus asked us to do. He said, Of course not. Do we kill prisoners of war, give them food and drink, and send them home again to their masters? Because remember, the Lord tells us to overcome evil with good to love even our enemies. And so they did. The king made a great feast for them and then sent them home to their master. After that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. If he had slaughtered all those people, <coughs> revenge would have started. And he goes back and forth, back and forth, and revenge never ends. But you see in the Middle East, you know, 
between the Sufis and the Shiites, the Islamic, two Islamic branches. And they've been fighting for, well, since they started around 700 AD, and they've been fighting for each other ever since. So that's what happens when you don't forgive people. It doesn't work out. But that's just that's just a little story. And the thing I like the most is there are angels here now. God is with us here now. There are unseen powers around us all the time. When you're a Christian, you have the Lord in your heart. Holy Spirit, Holy Brother, Holy Father is in our heart, and our angels surround us. You have your individual guardian angels, we have angels of the church. And once in a while, the Lord opens our eyes and lets us see. But whether we can see them or not, once you accept Jesus in your heart, they're there. You are protected. You are guided. Relax and know that the Lord has it all. Okay. All right, I'd like to sing a couple of songs and Sam will have a song. Okay. First one is I bless your name. I praise Lord Jesus today, especially. Whatever name, but.